So we are forced to kind of use this model by experiment. That's how science works. Now, you could ask, if the theory works so well, why are we still working so hard, excitingly, to build these particle accelerators and test this theory? I said it worked. In fact, it's because there's a troublesome part of this theory, and it has to do with this big Higgs, H, over here. Okay? When people first worked out the symmetries in this theory and how to use those symmetries to predict how things go together, there was a troublesome point. And the troublesome point was that those same symmetries imply that every fundamental particle is massless, has no mass. Okay? Now, massless particles can exist. Particles of light, photons coming out of the light bulb there, are massless. And of course, it, particles of light move at the speed of light. In fact, the, what is the case is that any particle that's massless has to move at the speed of light. Okay? Electrons have a mass. The atoms in my hands have mass. And the reason I can move my, my hand at a foot per second like that is because I have mass. If I didn't, my, my hand would have to move at the speed of light. Okay? So the, the, the fundamental symmetries that make this theory work say that every particle is massless. Sounds like a, something terribly wrong with this theory. So what to do about that? Well, in 1964, this guy, Peter Higgs, and some of his friends came up with an idea, a very possible but very weird solution. He said, it's called the Higgs mechanism, OK, let's suppose the particles are massless, fundamentally massless, no mass. Okay? But take the universe and fill it, completely fill it with a quantum field, a smooth field that acts to slow down the particles. Okay? So it's kind of like imagining this room full of water, and I move my hand, and I have to move it through water, and that slows my hand down. Okay? So this is the idea of the Higgs mechanism. The universe is filled with this all-pervading, omnipresent field. Okay, called the Higgs field. Um, if it wasn't for this field, things would move at the speed of light. In fact, intrinsically, the, the electrons in my hand want to go at the speed of light, but they can't because they keep interacting with this Higgs field. Okay? So pretty weird, pretty weird. Um, what makes the difference? Why are some things heavier than others? Well, in this theory, everything is massless, pretty much, um, except that heavy things interact more strongly. Like moving a pencil through water is easy, Moving a ping pong, bottle is, ping pong paddle is hard. Right? So how heavy is something is in this theory is just how strongly it interacts with this omnipresent Higgs field. Okay? Now, can you feel this Higgs field? I mean, this is what the standard model says. This room is filled with it. Can you feel it? Well, in a sense, you can feel it because otherwise your hands would be moving fast. The weight that you feel is, in fact, interaction with the Higgs field. So we are swimming in this visible, invisible field. Now, there are other invisible fields here, right? Like the Earth's magnetic field is right here in this room. You can't really feel it, but if you have a compass, it would line up and you could do it. The radio transmitters around San Diego are filling this room with electromagnetic waves. You can't feel them, right? They're going right through your body. But you take a radio in here, and it will move the electrons, and you can pick up, you can feel that, those fields. Now, and even the, the light coming out of this light bulb is, in fact, electromagnetic radiation, ripples in that electromagnetic field. But there's a big difference between these fields and the Higgs field. If I turn off the lights, if I turn off the radio transmitters, if I stop the dynamo action in the Earth's center, then, in fact, the electromagnetic fields will die away, and we'll have no electromagnetic field here. The Higgs field is different. The Higgs field is there even without sources. You can't turn it off. If you could turn it off, everything would start moving at the speed of light. Okay? So you can't turn it off. So we say it's there even with no source. It's a vacuum field. It's there in absolutely empty space. Okay? So empty space, what we mean by empty space is when you take out everything else, take out all the particles and all the fields that you can remove. The Higgs field can't be removed. It's a vacuum field. Okay? So electromagnetic field is, is zero in the vacuum, but the Higgs field is not. This is weird, but it's true, according to the standard model. Now, what if you could fiddle with this Higgs field? Let's suppose you could turn it off. What would happen? Well, the electrons in your body would suddenly start to move at the speed of light. The protons would, would just uh, change beyond description. They'd come unglued, perhaps. They would just discombobulate. So what a weapon you would have if you could control the Higgs field. If you could point at something and turn the Higgs field off in that region, that thing would just discombobulate completely. Okay. Even better. Suppose you could turn down the Higgs field like a dimmer switch on a light bulb. Okay? Well, what would happen? Things would get less massive. right? 
So hey, what a way to lose weight without dieting, right? <laughs> Just turn down the Higgs field. But of course, it's much more serious than that because the mass of the electrons determine the properties of the atoms and molecules. So if you change the Higgs field even a little bit, all the molecules would change completely. Chemistry would be completely different. Materials would be completely different. If you want to see really new materials, different than you can make out of the 92 elements that are known, you change the Higgs field. Okay? So this would be an amazing thing if you could do it. But can you do it? Well, no one's thought of any way of doing it. Okay? It may be impossible. We don't know how. But we do know something, that just after the Big Bang, the Higgs field actually was turned off. It wasn't turned on. And in those days, those picoseconds, the universe was a very different place. There were no protons and neutrons. They couldn't hold together. It was just quarks and leptons in a soup. Every particle was moving at the speed of light. You couldn't build any structures. You couldn't build anything in those days. And then about a picosecond after the Big Bang, the Higgs field turned on. And when the Higgs field turned on, this, this comes out of the math. You can figure this out. Things could start to go slower now. Things suddenly became massive. And then you could start to build protons and later atoms and all the structure of the universe. 